Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are going to be working on month five of the Pas de Deux quilt. I am so excited to keep working on this and we are, we've got what, there's six months so this one and one more month and this quilt is going to be finished. As always, I will be using the Laundry Basket fabric by Adida Sitar and it is a mismatcha fabric that I am using. And this quilt is the, if you're not familiar with it, it is the quilt by Rachel Hauser and this is the first page of the quilt booklet that you get from her in PDF form that I've printed. And we are actually gonna be working on the orange peel blocks right here. So I'm really excited about this. I have always wanted to do orange peel blocks and I've always been really interested in the orange peel blocks. So I've just never really known how to get started. Now this is gonna be using applique again, um, as I believe most orange peel blocks are done. And you guys know that I don't like hand stitching things, so I'm gonna be doing the same thing that I've been doing with all of the applique portions in this block of the month quilt that we have been doing. And that is using the fusible batting. It's a very thin batting, so you do have to be careful when flipping it around, but using that very thin fusible batting and using that to sew and then flip my pieces inside out or correct side out as it were in order to then put those onto the actual blocks themselves. Now I know there are a lot of places out there like Missouri Star and other places that have actual templates. I am going to be using her template so I've already cut it out here. This is the template that I'm going to be using to mark my lines. Obviously the biggest concern that I have is that my points are not going to be quite as pointy because I am going to be stitching those and then flipping them back out. As you guys are aware that can sometimes be a bit difficult to attain that beautiful point that we're looking for when you're flipping something inside out. The color fabrics that we're going to be using. So it's a little bit different this time. She recommended in hers doing a teal and a green color. Well because I am somewhat limited because I have chosen to stick with laundry basket fabrics and I have a set amount of fabric that I've purchased, I kind of had to tweak that a little bit. So I have actually thrown in a little bit of yellow as well as the green and then some of the teals that I could find. I don't have a ton of teals so you guys know I had to use teal in another portion of this quilt as well and it was a little bit difficult then. I'm hoping that these are going to turn out right. This is one and I have already cut my fabric so this is one selection and unfortunately they're all kind of oh here we go let's do it this way. They're kind of folded up, so I, I have them in order, okay? Um, so I'll take this side here. But this is one sort of selection that I am using here. So you can see this one has a little bit more of those yellows in there. Maybe this side doesn't have, it has more of the greens. Um, so some more greens there. And then I've got this selection here, so you can still see, again, some of the yellows that are in there as well as I've got some of these darker colors. Now I have already cut everything like I said, so what I have here is I have everything pinned for the colors because I basically sat down because I was a little bit nervous about just randomly choosing colors and putting them together. I didn't, I want this to be a curated scrappy look, so I've kind of set things out so that stuff is not spaced right next to each other, or at least that's the hope. Then I have gone through and pinned everything so that I have it all together and I know what block I'm supposed to be doing. And I have also taken pictures of the setup so that I kind of, when I laid them out, so I have something to refer back to, something really good to do. Nowadays we have such easy access to cameras that I can take a picture of it, refer back to that picture to say, am I laying this out the right way? so that hopefully I get it. Again, it's not the end of the world if it messes up because it is scrappy, so it'll be okay either way. But let's see if we can get this done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lay these out. This is the design template here that I've kind of 
laid out for myself. So like I talked about, I had trouble finding just the teal and green color. So I did throw in some of the yellow and on her example paper, she had yellow in there as well. So this wasn't totally like my idea, um, but in the actual directions, it just says to do teal and green. And so I ended up looking at that and deciding, you know what, I really liked the look of the yellow in there. And we've already used that yellow in several other places. So it felt right to use it. And that helped me to really be able to expand my color choices on this. So you can see I haven't used a ton of yellow in this one. There's definitely some here. And then if we look over here, we've got some yellow flowers and there's a little bit of yellow in this design as well. So just little pops of it, still trying to maintain that green to teal. You know, I feel like this one and this one are as close to, this one's more blue, but there were hints of teal. You know, obviously I haven't got the exact colors. Now that we have this laid out and organized, what we're gonna do is go row by row to sew on and draw in the orange peel. And what I have done to keep myself organized is pinned everything. And so now I will take the top piece is the one that's going to be the orange peel. We're gonna fill the back of this and fill for the bumpy side and we want these sides to go together so if you think of this when I'm making it uh, a slit here and flip it inside out right we're going to end up with the bumpy side on the outside and the beautiful fabric side facing out as well this means that bumpy side is where I am going to be able to attach that so if I did it the other way when I ironed it it would basically just be ironing itself together which I actually did in one of the other videos the, the I think the first time I applicate I did that it actually worked out for that project you know it's not the end of the world if you do that it just means that whenever you go to applique it down you just have to be a little bit more conscientious of your placement of that piece so again it you know it's a technique. It's not the only technique out there. And if you don't do it perfectly, it really doesn't mean anything. You can fix it and it'll be okay. So now I'm going to replace that pin in there. I've got everything situated and I'll go through and sew this, but I'm going to go ahead and continue to outline my pieces. Other thing you might notice if you are doing this project at home with her instructions is the sizing that she recommends cutting for cutting out the orange peels is different than what I have cut and basically that is primarily just to save on fabric so she has you cut a larger piece in that way it gives you a little bit more wiggle room when you're drawing this out also, because if you're doing this in a normal applique method, you would likely want to have a lot more um, fabric around the edges of this. But because I'm literally going to sew on this line, I can skimp on my placement of that fabric. And that is, in this instance, really good for me because I don't have a ton of fabric left. Um, for this quilt, which is good because we're on month five. Now, if you guys stay till the end, I am going to show you something that I subscribed to um, on my own. It was in, a, in an effort to get more fabric by Adida. And um, I'll show you guys what it was because it kind of was a little bit different than what I thought it was going to be. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you are considering this in the way that I was. So I'll talk about that though at the end, just in case you don't want to hang around for that and hear me jabber about it. You're just here for, for this actual block placement.
So now that we have got our pieces sewn together and remembering that they are wrong, they're right sides together, we're going to take our snips and just cut a little piece. And I try and cut also a little vertical piece as well to help with the ease of cutting it out. The next thing that we've got to do is go around and I like to cut with pinking shears to help just with any fraying of fabric rather than using the straight scissors. Um, I think straight scissors are way easier to cut with than the pinking shears, but you just have that increased risk of fraying the fabric. So we're gonna do that. I like to cut about a quarter of an inch. It's not 100% right, but I also don't wanna leave a large amount of fabric because that's gonna add bulk to your seams when you're flipping them over. So I do like to go maybe like a, on the short, a scant quarter inch seam, right? So just a little bit smaller than that, but certainly we do want to give us some room to be able to do what we need to when we need to flip it over. And then once we get all of these cut around, we will go back through and flip them inside out and we will be ready to iron them onto our pieces and then we will be ready to sew them onto our pieces. We're gonna clean this mess up a little bit here. And I've got everything laid out. I did switch these. I don't know, I thought, I know, what do you think? I just think this one pops a little bit more on it. Okay, so here's what I've got sort of layout that we're going with here and we are going to iron these down okay so we just want to attempt to center this block on there like so try not to move all of the other ones so much and then we're going to take our hot iron and this is why i want to have the back of this be the bumpy side so that when I iron this on there, it's going to adhere to it. If I had done it the other way, it's not the end of the world. It's just whenever you iron it, this back is gonna stick to this, which it'll still make it nice and flat like this, but you'll just have to pin it before you applique it on. And I'm also taking note, important to take note of the direction of your orange peel when you're doing a quilt like this um, or a block like this because you don't want to do it in the wrong direction. That would be super sad. Well, I'm sure that you can remove the fusible batting, but the chances of ripping it, there's just so many possibilities that would go wrong. So just try and make sure that you orient them in the proper direction before you iron them down so that you don't end up giving yourself a headache. And I've kind of chosen the directions that I want um, the fabric to orient. So I like this one because it's going, I feel like the pattern itself is going up and down, which is, is nice. And then for centering this, they are supposed to be centered on this. I'm just eyeballing it. So I think that's nice. I know some companies make acrylic templates that you can use to, to cut your orange peels. So if you were just wanting to do a quilt 
with just orange peels. Maybe you want to do a laundry basket fabric quilt with just orange peels. You can just buy their template and that template will tell you, most of the time those templates are going to tell you the size of the square you need to cut. Now, some people would say they're done, so they've got their fusible on, and then they're just going to quilt over the top of it. I am still going to go through and stitch around the edges. Like I told you guys, I just, I feel more comfortable. A, I like the look of it, but I also feel, I feel more comfortable that it's going to stay there. It always makes me a little bit nervous. Now, the other thing that you guys might notice here is obviously my points are not super pointy from having to turn these inside out. Um, and I think that that is just sort of the nature of this. If I had hand applique it, maybe that's, you know, the benefit of hand applique. This one's not too bad. This one's pretty good, but a lot of these are a little bit blunted. For me, at the end of the day, the speed of doing this, the ease of doing it, is so much more important than like getting it a hundred percent perfect and I think a finished quilt is so much better than a quilt that's in pieces or a you know quilt that you never finish because you're continually unpicking or fixing things now the other thing that I would say is that you really need to be careful when you're you're turning these inside out because this fusible batting is very easy to rip. So if you are a little bit heavy handed, maybe you could consider getting a thicker fusible batting so that you have a little bit more substance to it, but this thing will just rip. Um, and I've had a lot of concerns with right at the top which may be part of the reason why some of these are not as pointed, but when I go to turn these and I use my pin, I think they do make a tool that you can use for this, but I don't have it. So I'm poking this on my fabric, but I have to be careful because this would definitely go directly through this. So I have to be really careful in whenever I'm doing it, oops, sorry guys, in whenever I'm doing that to get it out. But I do think that helped a little bit on that one. All right, we'll place this last one. And then we will be ready to sew these together. I think the colors are turning out okay. What do you guys think? I think that this has been some of my weirder colors that I have chosen, but I feel like just because it is all from the same designer it ends up looking okay um, you know and I think I did try to stick with the same color tone so if it was like a lighter color even if she had a teal I tried to choose a lighter color if it was a darker color I tried to choose a darker color just to stay with that same tone so if you have the same issue when you're quilting that would be one thing I would consider to try and sort of focus on is maybe you're not matching the colors, but maybe you're matching the tone of the fabric of whether it's really dark or really light. And that way you still get that sort of color play that that quilt designer set up. Because I do think they work really hard on designing these quilts and they know a lot of things. That's why their quilt designs are beautiful. That's why Rachel Hauser's quilt designs are beautiful. But if you can't match it exactly because of fabric, I don't think that means you have to go buy more fabric. I think it just means you have to adjust and maybe just match the tone of it. All right, so since we're gonna do webbing, we're gonna take this first row, quilt it down, and then we'll add this row and then the next row. So, and I'm gonna line these up corner to corner and sew down this. Quarter inch seam. Okay, so I have my first row done, but I realized that I forgot to applique them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can see this is also why I still applique. I think if I put that heat back on there, it would stick down, but 
I also think it'll be easier to do this without everything attached. So I'm just going to quickly applique the, this one, the rest of them, and the other blocks that I haven't sewn together down before I do that. I just got real excited about putting the block together. So let me do that. Right, everybody that is this part of the block finished here so this is only one section there's actually three sections but they all go together just like this really so that is my orange peel I'll show you um, this is like a partial section so I'm not supposed to put this together just yet but just to show you guys what it ended up looking like there are these two here and then I have this longer three set right here. Okay, so that is the orange peel block completed. Now I did mention earlier in this that I wanted to talk to you guys about the subscription that I subscribe to. And I've actually got two months here. So on Adidas Sitar's website, there was a subscription for fabric bundles and you would get um, some fabric every month sent from her. Now when you click on it, it looks like it's supposed to be this like mixture of fabrics, which is exactly what I wanted for doing this quilt because I just have so many different colors going on here. And even though we're getting near the end of it, I thought it would be nice to have a little splash of color for some of them. It, it's a little bit different than what I thought it was though. So I'll show you the first month that I got was this month. It comes in this really nice packaging. And as you can see, I'll get really close. There's some really beautiful cornflower blues and it goes from that cornflower blue to the white. And the colors are beautiful. They're really nice. I'm sad that I didn't have them for that first block that we did a long, long time ago um, because I could have used some of the blues and whites in, in that part. The other thing of interest is that you also get a quilt. So this quilt is basically ends up being 48 and a half by 64 and a half inches long. So it's not a huge quilt, but it's not a small quilt either. It's not, not a bad size. And I mean, it's super, looks like it'd be super quick and easy to put together. So it's almost more than like a fabric bundle kit. I would call this more of a quick quilt subscription. And then this month, I'll show you what I got was, this was the quilt holiday garland. So really pretty little squares on squares. And I've got some really pretty holiday bundle fabric here. Not exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking of like a mixture of just multitude of different fabrics and cutoffs that they were finished with and didn't need. But if you guys are interested in something like that, you can check out Adidas website. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by her. I just thought it would be nice to have a little bit more of her fabric. I'm considering going back and doing some of the some of these projects, these little quilt blocks that we've done throughout the pod to do, specifically the star block, I think would look really pretty as like a giant 
quilt of just repeating stars. So I've kind of thought about doing that and in order to do that, I would need to have more fabric. So this was a way of sort of building up that stash without going and buying just like specific amounts. Now, for some people, they don't need to build their stash. And um, so this might be a bad idea. For some people who are looking for smaller projects to complete, I think this would be a great idea. Um, I don't know if I will use these with the actual quilt here. Um, I guess it'll depend on how I progress through the rest of this quilt or if I decide to continue with my thought process of making some of these quilts into larger ones or these quilt blocks into larger ones. All right, everybody. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it and enjoyed this next section on the Pas de Deux quilt. I am excited to progress to the next part and start assembling some of this quilt. I think that's going to be really nice to see some of it come together. And I think we should be getting a lot more of that. I feel like I've said that several times, but we have sort of put a few things together here and there. Um, and now that we're sort of in that five last two months, I think a lot more sections will start to come together at the end of this block of the month five. So as always, everything is listed down below. If you're interested in doing the Pas de Deux quilt, it is by Rachel Hauser, and I have listed her website down below so that you can go and purchase it. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below. I love hearing from you guys, all of your support, everything very much appreciated. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.